Okay, before we delve into flow rate, and recovery rate, let's um, just quickly go over what's going uh, on in our well that we're not seeing. First of all, you know you, you've got a pipe in the ground, you've got a case pipe in the ground, you've got a water pipe in the case pipe. Inside the case pipe is what is holding our water that we can use. It's getting that water from probably water-bearing sand and the our static head is somewhere around the around the water table within this sand. Now in order for us to find that flow rate or recovery rate in this uh, shallow well, we're going to have to um, pump it out faster than it can recover. And after we get to that point, that's when we can begin to figure out our flow rate. And it's basically the number of gallons divided by the time it takes your well to recover and return to the starting point before you start pumping. And here's an example of how we can figure that out. Um, let's say we pump three gallons of water out of our well before it begins to fail. And um, it takes six minutes to recover to the level we began. Um, well, it's three gallons divided by six minutes gives us 0.5. So the flow rate um, is one half a gallon per minute. Now, ideally, you would want three gallons per minute with a well of this type. More is better. This is the reason it's a good idea to have your well as deep as you can and have as much water in your casing pipe so it has additional time to recover as you're pumping water out. Now I'll discuss how to go about getting those measurements so you can find what your flow rate is. Okay, somebody asked me if I could tell them how to check the, uh, the flow rate or replenishment rate of one of these shallow wells. Um, uh, more uh, difficult way to do it is to, before I do anything, take the pump off, drop a line down in the well, figure out what my static head is. Then pump the well, put the pump back on, pump it until it starts to fail, stop, drop a line down in the well, and measure it. Then what I do is I wait for the level that I pump down to to get back up to where it was and I measured the amount of water that was and the time it took to do it then I know my flow rate. Seems like a lot of trouble for something that's just giving me some water for plants and animals and to clean up and you know wash my face off after I've been on the tractor or something. So what I would do is I would uh, get started. I would pump this until it started to fail. And when I'm doing it, I would measure how much I was pumping. Keep you some five gallon buckets. Once it starts to fail, remember how many buckets you had pumped. Walk away for an hour or two. Come back and see if you can repeat that. Um, if you can easily repeat it, you can knock the time down. Uh, come back in 30 minutes. Once you get to the point that you know that you can, uh, in the least amount of time, do the same amount of pumping that you initially did when you knew the well was full, then you can go back and you can figure your recovery time. You'll know um, how long it took for it to replenish pumping X amount of gallons. Then you just do the math and you'll know what your flow rate is in the well. Um, you could have a well, say, 25 feet deep and it's got a lot of water in it and you pump but it doesn't have the flow it's not getting a lot of water into it, it takes a long time or you could have one that's shallow kind of like this one right here this one is not very deep but it flows great it is bringing water in as it's going out pretty pretty well so um, that is what I would suggest that's the easiest way to do it it may not be the most uh, mathematically critical way to do it but um, 
it, all you're going to invest in this is just a little bit of time and uh, a little bit of pumping and do a little bit of math and it'll get you close.